There is a place uh, in the Himalayan region, approximately around uh, 14,700, 14,800 feet above mean sea level, which is uh, known as the Kanti Sarovar. Kanti Sarovar means uh, uh, a lake of grace. It is called a lake of grace because this is where the first yoga program happened over fifteen thousand years ago. The first yoga program, this was the site, the bank of this Sarovar. There are a whole lot of stories why geographically it happened here because Adi Yogi was not here earlier, he was elsewhere. It's lots of stories but I will not go into the stories, okay? So, he happened to be there on the banks of this lake and this is where with seven disciples he started his first yoga program. This place is very significant on the, in the whole planet, this place is very significant because it's in this place for the first time a human being perceived that if we strive, we can evolve. Adi Yogi, when he spoke about evolution, I know <laughs> the theory of evolution is uh, 150 years old, you know, last year was the 200th birth anniversary of Charles Darwin. At the age of fifty-four, he propounded, so it is less than hundred and fifty years old. But Adi Yogi spoke about the evolution in a certain way. He said, first the divine manifested in the form of fish, life and a water. You heard of the… at least the Indian people, you heard of the nine avatars, hmm? Or avatar means only a Hollywood movie for you, what has happened? Nine manifestations of the divine. The first manifestation in the form of a fish, life under water. The second manifestation, tell me what's avatars? Matsya avatara and then what? Kurma avatara, which means a turtle, that means an amphibious life. The second manifestation of the divine is amphibious, half in, half out. The third manifestation is Varaha avatara, divine manifested in the form of a boar. Why a boar? Why it's being referred to as a boar, the third manifestation is. Among the mammals, which is the basis for the making of a human being, later on. Among the mammals, one animal which is most strongly rooted in its body is a pig. You can't kill a pig easily, do you know this? Hmm? See, in where we are, the yoga center, the tribal boys, they go into school, if they see a deer, three, four of them corner it with a stick, they'll kill it. One thing, they will kill it. So easy to kill a deer. But a wild boar is not like that. You break its body, it will not die. It's very, very strongly rooted in its body. So if somebody is very physical, you say, oh, he's like a pig. Yes or no? Because physically, it's a very rooted life. So the next form of the divine, is Varaha Tara as a wild boar. What's the next one? Narasimha Avatara, which is half man and half animal form. The next manifestation of the divine is Vaman Avatara, a dwarf man. Next one is Purishuram Avatara, a full fledged man but emotionally volatile man. So volatile he lopped off his own mother's head. He's such an angry man. The next one is Rama Avatara, a peaceful man. The next one is Krishna Avatara, 
a loving man. Next one is supposed to be the Buddha, a meditative man. The next one is supposed to be a mystical human being. So this need not necessarily mean that one person. They're talking about humanity evolving, life evolving in a certain way. So this Adi Yogi said over fifteen thousand years ago, does it run very much parallel to Darwin's theory of evolution? Yes or no? It's nearly there, isn't it? In fact, it's very much there. So this was said fifteen thousand years ago, not hundred and fifty years ago. And then he said, as human beings, physically you have evolved your point, further evolution is not possible. Unless some dramatic changes happen in the solar system. It's very uncanny, about four years ago, the neuroscientists came up with this fact that human brain cannot evolve further. You can learn to use it better, but it cannot evolve further because the only way it can evolve is either you must increase the size of the neuron to become more capable or you have to increase the number of neurons. If you increase the number of neurons, clarity will be lost. This happens to many children. When they are born, they are brilliant, but they can't do anything properly because there is no clarity. It takes some time to shed some of the neurons, reduce the number of neurons in the brain and then they become stable. But otherwise they are all crackling, they can't do anything straight because there is no clarity. If you increase the size of the neuron, the power or the energy that it consumes is too much. Right now as you sit here, in a resting state when you sit down, twenty percent of your calorific energy is being consumed by your brain right now even if it's not doing anything very creative. <laughs> yes, in a resting state, twenty percent of your energy is being consumed by your brain because brain is a very high energy consuming part of your body, twenty percent, it's a small thing. So much body consumes eighty percent, this much brain consumes twenty percent of the energy. If you increase the size of the neuron, the volume of energy that it consumes will become such the body cannot sustain it. So neurologists are saying human brain cannot evolve further because the physical loss will not allow it. The loss of physics will not allow it. So he said physical evolution is finished according to the loss of physics. That's a modern statement. Adi Yogi said unless the dynamics of the solar system changes, which means Unless the physical laws change in the, in the… on the planet, evolution cannot f go further than this. But you can evolve in ways which are not physical and there is a way to do it. If you strive, you can evolve. This is the most dynamic and creative process for a human being, that the way you are right now, whatever limitations nature has fixed upon you right now is not concrete is not one hundred percent. If you strive, you can cross these boundaries. So this idea and the possibility of evolution and the technologies to evolve as to what you can do to evolve, this happened on the banks of this Kanti Sarovar, about six to eight kilometers above Kedarnath. It's not a touristy place, it's something you have to trek in the snow, otherwise you won't make it.